Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's Dave Reed, uh, again, the race director for the Ironman Santa Rosa event. Um, glad you could join me, hopefully, on this Facebook Live um, event. <clears throat> First off, I want to apologize. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, so I'll try not to hack um, too much on camera. I know that's not the most pleasant thing to listen to. Um, but I wanted to take an opportunity today um, to talk a little bit about the Ironman um, Santa Rosa bike course. We took a little bit of time trying to put the course together uh, and we announced it back in December. And so I wanted to take some time today to uh, go over um, some of the, the questions that people have about the course as well as kind of how we came up with the course. I know that there's been some questions um, related to elevation, uh, what roads, why this, why that, um, how did we come up with these, with this course. Um, and so I wanted to kind of try and take a minute and um, explain the process of developing uh, an Ironman bike course, particularly in California. Um, so hopefully through that process, I'll get a chance to give you guys uh, a... Um, a sense uh, of, of what we go through as well as answer some of the questions. And then if you have additional questions, um, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can today. And then uh, you're always welcome to use the Ironman Santa Rosa Facebook page, uh, message uh, me on that page, and, and I'll do my best to answer questions in a timely manner. So to get started uh, in explaining the Ironman bike course process and developing it, I wanted to show folks a little bit of a, a slide that I kind of put together um, on PowerPoint. And the reason being um, just to try and illustrate kind of the, the, the various things that we try and balance. So I'm gonna kind of turn the camera around for a second so you can take a look uh, at, at this a little uh, PowerPoint slide I put together. So what this slide is kind of showing is some of the various aspects uh, of developing an Ironman bike course that we try and take into account. Um, obviously, we want to get 112 miles, but then we, we try and consider some other things like the terrain, the elevation profile, how much total elevation gain is there across that 112 miles. We take, consider spectator experience. Um, you know, is your at, is the athlete out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and that spectator doesn't have a chance to interact with them very easily? There's operational logistics about kind of how to run the event. You know, business impacts relates to kind of local businesses that we might be crossing or impacting. Public transportation systems touches on um, you know buses and trains and other systems that operate around um, a region and how do we impact those. And then obviously there's the traffic impacts of the local residents uh, and the community in which we're uh, racing. So I wanna go into a little bit more on, on each of those, but I wanted to kind of just lay out kind of the seven different things that, that we try to, to weigh when, when developing a bike course. Um, a lot of folks question, um, you know, how does, uh, how do we come up with this? Why do we choose those roads? And, and it's, and it's a, a collection of different things. Um, and that's what those seven, th those are the seven things that I try and outline. And uh, for the Ironman Santa Rosa course, we were dealing with, um, you know, trying to hold true to some of the original um, Ironman Vineman course. So a lot of the first half of the race is on many of the similar roads that the Vineman event uh, took place on. So it's a, a much similar feel for that first half of the race. Um, and then we have to get down towards Santa Rosa because um, the event is centered in Santa Rosa. The finish is there, the transition two is there, and your run is along the Santa Rosa Creek Trail. So the question was, how do we get down to Santa Rosa? And obviously you have to traverse some, some bigger roads, um, one of them being River Road. Um, you'll be crossing that. And uh, we had a question earlier about kind of how we manage crossing major roads like that. And for the general public, we'll be having some advanced notification signs out there. And then we'll be having traffic control, highway patrol controlling traffic. So the athletes are able to safely cross those major crossings and 
CHP is able to get uh, vehicle traffic across as quickly and efficiently as they can. So as we got towards Santa Rosa, um, one of the things that we were dealing with, one of the, one of the challenges um, facing uh, the event was balancing both the traffic impacts, public transportation, um, and the uh, and trying to develop a really uh, great spectator experience. So what we find is that in a lot of our popular races like Arizona um, and some of the other races where there's there's places for spectators to watch their athlete, um, it's an opportunity for your support crew to get out there and cheer for you. Um, for you to get some of that energy and uh, encouragement from those loved ones and from the from the crowds that are around those areas. And so by creating a, a multi-loop experience on the latter half of the course, we're pr trying to create a real energized um, downtown area where the finish line is. Um, you'll be able to see your athletes on the bike path, you know, your your loved ones will be able to see you or you'll be able to see your athlete multiple times on the bike and multiple times on the run and then you'll be there right at the finish. So trying to create a great spectator experience was one aspect in kind of creating a multi-loop um, concept for the latter half of the race. Um, the public transportation element was a big one for us uh, and a big challenge and we have uh, a new um, public transportation system coming online in 2017 in Sonoma County and Marin County called the SMART. It's the Sonoma Marin Area Rapid Transit or Rail Transit. Uh, rail tra Transit, um, And it's not quite online. They've been doing a lot of testing, um, but it's going to be coming online soon. And to maintain service to the Sonoma Marin County area with minimizing impacts to that major new public transportation system, we had to design a course that uh, reduced to the greatest extent possible the places where the course crossed the tracks. Um, we don't want to have to stop a major uh, transportation system uh, multiple times. We don't want to have to stop athletes as they cross a train tracks. Um, that reduces the, you know, that's not a fun thing as an athlete. And so we were able to find literally the only overcrossing um, which is, you know, a place where uh, a bridge crosses the railroad tracks in Sonoma County. And that's why we brought the course down um, through Roner Park. A lot of folks have asked, you know, why are we bringing it through Roner Park um, by a major kind of commercial area and a casino? And that was to use that one overcrossing um, of the railroad tracks uh, and get folks into kind of a multi-loop experience. Um, to be totally clear, you know, there's been some questions raised about, uh, you know, this southern part of the course and, you know, there might be more, um, more scenic sections of Sonoma County and, and there are some beautiful roads in Sonoma County. There are absolutely, um, the pastoral portions of southern Sonoma County, um, out towards the coast are, are magnificent, um, as well as the wine country that you'll be riding through for the first half. So... If we, when I looked at options for the bike course um, in, uh, in, in and around Sonoma County, um, if we brought the bike course out into the kind of pastoral southern and southwestern portions of Sonoma County, the terrain changed dramatically. Um, you got a lot more climbing in the latter half of the event, and um, the footprint of the event got much bigger. So... Um, what happens when you, when you have a, a bigger footprint is your impacts across the, the region get bigger. Um, and, uh, and we couldn't justify and we couldn't find a course that managed all of these various, uh, competing interests, um, in bringing, uh, the course out significantly into kind of the Southern Western, Southwestern portions of Sonoma County. Um, I do want to say that when you get a chance, um, I definitely recommend coming up to Sonoma County, riding the course and training on it, but then taking some time and riding some of the other amazing roads in Sonoma County, getting um, out towards, you know, Bolinas and Southwest Sonoma County. The pastoral countryside there is spectacular. There's some great rolling hills. Um, so don't limit yourself in training 
for the Ironman Santa Rosa event just to the course. It's always great to be familiar with the course and get a chance to get out and pre-ride it, but um, that by no means should limit you to enjoying uh, all the roads in, in uh, the North Bay and Sonoma County. A um, couple other things I wanted to touch on kind of regarding uh, the course. Uh, folks um, are, you know, have asked about the elevation profile and, and I wanted to touch a little bit on that and the, and the terrain. And the profile as it's designed right now um, has about a 3,000 foot elevation gain across the 112 miles. And if you look at the 70.3 profile, you're gaining about 2,400 feet in 56 miles. So what that tells you, um, and there's some slightly different roads that the full uses on the north part of the course, but essentially it's very similar, is that you're gonna be doing most of your climbing in the first 56 miles of the Ironman Santa Rosa course. Um, conversely, as an example, um, Arizona, that's a really popular race that a lot of people consider flat and fast. Um, you're doing the beeline climb three times and that total elevation profile um, is about 2,500 feet for the 112 miles. So the Ironman Santa Rosa course has got a little bit more climbing than Arizona, um, but you do it in the first 56 miles. Um, and that last 56 um, has a lot less climbing. Um, so I think that is a, is a great advantage to the course coupled with that kind of multi-loop experience where you're gonna get a chance to see your loved one um, or your support team a couple times um, and get that energy from that downtown area. A um, couple other questions that have come up along the way. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're telling folks the best place to watch the race um, as a spectator is going to be in that downtown area. There's going to be, you know, some great restaurants. There's going to be great energy from the um, from the expo and finish line area. And then you're going to be seeing runners multiple times and bikers multiple times. Um, folks have also been asking about kind of pre-riding the course. And I do want to make a couple points on um, pre-riding the course. And pardon me, I'm just going to take a quick drink of water here or tea, um, just to try not to cough. Um, so pre-riding the course, um, most of the course, 90% uh, of the course is open um, to pre-riding. There's a small section um, where we're going to be using that bridge over the, uh, over the train tracks. Um, uh, you would access it on South um, Santa Rosa Avenue, um, where you're not going to be able to use that flyover um, and get down into Roner Park. So that's a very simple detour. You'll just stay straight on Santa Rosa Avenue. It brings you down onto um, Golf Club Drive. You'll take a right and you'll be able to ju jump back onto the course from there. Um, so I just wanted to make a point on pre-riding the course. Uh, there's just that small section that's closed um, to bikes until race day um, because actually that's you know, kind of an, a Highway 101 off-ramp. Um, on most days other than race day. So that was just a note I wanted to make, uh, make sure you guys were aware of um, regarding pre-riding the course. Um, again, you know, most of the roads uh, for the event, uh, are, you know, in that first 60 miles are very similar to, or first 56 miles are very similar to um, the Vine Man course. You'll be doing the Dry Creek Valley You'll be doing the Anderson or Alexander Valley down White 128 through Geyserville. Um, so it's it's spectacular in that sense. One of the other things that um, I wanted to touch on regarding the course uh, was uh, athlete safety. Um, so one of the things that I tried to consider and we tried to consider working with um, local agencies and, and Ironman staff was athlete safety. And... One of the things about athlete safety that I had a hard time with as an athlete on the Vineman course, sorry, I'm going to keep drinking so I don't cough too much. One of the things I had an issue with was that all of the roads for both the 70.3 and the full um, were open to vehicle traffic. So there were very few places where you were um, not having to worry about a car on your left shoulder as you passed an athlete or in some instances as you made a left turn making sure that you didn't get uh, hit by a car. That's uh, definitely something 
we want to avoid as athletes and as race producers. So for this new Ironman Santa Rosa course, I'm working really hard with um, the local jurisdictions, Sonoma County and the city of Santa Rosa, um, to provide a lot more uh, closed sections of the course that are protected um, and there isn't vehicle traffic. So that final list of closed roads um, is still being worked on, um, but I, it is uh, a big piece of this new course um, that I think is going to be, again, a big improvement over um, the historical Ironman Vine Man and Vine Man 70.3 courses. Just trying to provide a little bit more safety out there for the athletes, as well as um, provide transportation pathways for the motoring public so that they're not trapped um, or people can still access things as needed. But just trying to address kind of that issue that I saw a lot of times on the course where athletes were looking over their left shoulder, just making sure that there wasn't a car in their uh, hip pocket. Um, so let's see, you know, I think we had some other questions around kind of, um, you know, the, that Southern part of the County. And so I hope I've answered some of those questions around kind of why we have that loop down there. Um, it alleviates a, a number of issues. Um, but, but I think, um, you know, folks concerns or questions about the course, um, I understand it. I, you know, in, in developing a course I had, I've literally gone through dozens of inter iterations of a course and there's certainly, um, there's certainly a million different ways to come up with 112 miles, uh, in Sonoma County and each of them have their pros and cons, um, and challenges and obstacles. And what we've come up with, with the Ironman 70.3 course, I think Ironman 70.3 course and the Ironman course for Santa Rosa I think tries to find the best balance. Um, and so I hope that you um, can can understand where I'm coming from in trying to develop the course. And I certainly respect people's uh, um, opinions about kind of other routes and other alternatives, uh, totally valid questions and ideas. Um, and it's just not um, as simple as, as picking the most beautiful roads in a community that we're in and riding there because um you know one person's beautiful road uh, might include a, a five mile climb uh and another person's beautiful road is going to be pancake flat um and then there's everything in between so um that that i think i i hope uh, answers some of those questions about the route um we, you know, have some questions about, um, you know, how does um, transition one work? Um, and what I'm going to be doing uh, kind of over the next few months as we lead up to both the 70.3 event and the full event is I'm going to be trying to do um, a number of these Ironman live events to answer a, a bunch of various questions, try and go over different venue details, um, do an Ironman live event, maybe um, <clears throat> out at Lake, Lake Sonoma give you guys a visual sense of what it looks like out there. Um, but athletes will be swimming, um, you know, in Lake Sonoma, you'll transition to your bikes, um, and you'll descend out of Lake Sonoma. So a lot of folks have been asking, uh, you know, about that transition in that first four or five miles of the bike. Um, and one of the things I'd, I'd like to share and I'll, and we'll, again, we'll do another Facebook live event about Lake Sonoma is you'll get exit the water and you do have a little bit of a run up, up a hill, um, to transition. And I look at that as an opportunity to warm up your legs. Um, as you get started on the bike as an, as an athlete and as a swimmer, um, uh, and, and a competitor in Ironman events, you know, it's, for me, it's always a tough transition where you've been using your arms predominantly for, you know, an hour plus, And, uh, now you're getting out there on the bike. So I look at the transition, um, as an opportunity to warm up your legs, you get on your bike and then you have this like four mile descent or not quite four mile, about a two and a half mile, three mile descent, um, to the dry Creek Valley. Um, and that descent will give you an opportunity to stretch out your back, stretch your legs again. Um, and they've been a little bit warmed up from that, from that run up from transition. And then you'll, um, you'll take a left turn um, onto Dutcher Creek road and you'll start some climb, some of the first climbing in the, in the course. And I think, um, 
you know, having the opportunity to warm up your legs on that run up from uh, the lake is going to be helpful. Pardon me. <coughs> and then you'll be able to um, stretch out your legs on that descent. You get a bit of a, a spin out and then you'll start your um, your climb up uh, up Dutcher Creek um, towards like Clover, the Cloverdale area. Um, so that was kind of a, a question we had about um, transition and how that works related to the bike course. Um, just to review some of the logistics on the bike course, we're, again, we'll have um, aid stations and special needs. Um, there'll be about six aid stations. Uh, we anticipate six aid stations on the bike between 10 and 14, 15 miles apart. The first aid station being kind of maybe about 14, uh, 15 miles into the race and then every uh, all the other aid stations between 12 um, and uh, and near 10 and 12 miles apart um, and then uh, bike special needs as always will be accessed uh, accessible um, likely one time between about mile 52 and 60 we're finalizing kind of the, the the best area to put that since it needs a bit of real estate for all the bags and also just for you guys to access those bags safely um, let's see, uh, you know, again, we've got our, we'll have our standard nutrition out on course, um, the cliff products, cliff shots, cliff blocks, and cliff bars, as well as bananas and Gatorade and water. Um, but I wanted to just, um, you know, make sure you're aware of that. Nothing's changing for 2017 in terms of our nutrition out on the bike course. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, I'm just seeing if there's any other questions coming in. There's some questions kind of about um, some of the swim. Um, and again, we can spend some more time on the swim later, but I'll answer a couple of them here now. Um, we're looking at a two-lap um, Ironman uh, swim, uh, and then uh, and then you'll exit and, and, and transition. Um, that may change, but right now we're, we're, we're looking at a, a two lap full Ironman swim. Um, the, you know, there's, there's a question kind of about temperature and kind of what the, what the temperature is going to be like on the bike course or what the weather is going to be like. Um, so in July, um, the typical weather pattern in Sonoma County um, is there's kind of a marine layer in the morning. For those of you who have done the 70.3 or the, the full event, you know, there's usually some fog cover in the morning. Depending on how thick that is, it'll clear anywhere between 11 and maybe 1. Uh, and then the temperature will start to rise throughout the day. So that first half of the bike for most folks, um, or those first few hours for most folks, should be fairly cool. Um, and then it'll start to warm up throughout the day. Um, but then, you know, keep in mind, as I've, as I've tried to mention before, as you transition from bike to run, you'll be getting out onto the Santa Rosa Creek Trail. And so the hottest portions of the day when you're hopefully off your bike, um, you'll be on a shaded, flat um, bike path trail network. So um, that's a, a significant improvement, I think, over... Um, the 70.3 and the full Vineman events where you, you were uh, begging for some shade out there on the run. Um, let's see, what else, what other questions are coming in? Um, folks are asking kind of about transportation to Lake Sonoma. Um, again, we're going to have, if you're familiar with the Ironman 70.3 in St. George, or even um, the old Lake Tahoe event, uh, we're going to be providing bus um, shuttling from downtown Santa Rosa out to Lake Sonoma. Um, so athletes um, only will be able to use those buses if they wish. We will also have parking out there um, at Lake Sonoma. Um, and a lot of folks have said, there's not a lot of parking at Lake Sonoma. And there are actually, um, there is significantly more parking out at Lake Sonoma than there was um, around the kind of Guerneville venue um, historically. So we're going to have parking out there and we'll have supplemental shuttles bringing folks from those parking areas um, up to transition as needed. So you'll have the option of driving yourself out there um, with your loved ones um, with you or taking the shuttle. Um, I certainly, you know, from a logistics standpoint, it's always easy just to hop on a shuttle um, bus and just, uh, just kind of 
take your time with your thoughts, maybe grab some snacks or a breakfast, um, and just be dropped right off um, at the front door, so to speak, of uh, Transition One. But you'll have both options available to you, and there is significantly more parking out there uh, than there was in Guerneville. Um, and again, it's it's not on um, not on the course per se, like it was uh, on River Road um, around Guerneville. Um, water temp for the race, uh, folks have been firing off a few of those questions, so I'll make I'll just touch on that. We expect um, the water temperature to be between about 63, 64, and you know upper 60s, so 67, 68. So definitely wetsuit legal. We don't anticipate uh, a temperature high enough to make it a um, wetsuit illegal uh, swim. So definitely plan on wetsuit legal swim. Again, uh, it's a beautiful venue, deep water. Um, so uh, for those of you accustomed to walking, the Vine Man uh, swims uh, that won't be available to you this year, but um, we hope it's going to be a much better swim experience uh, for you. Um, you won't be able to take your bikes on the bus. Uh, somebody's uh, Andy uh, is asking about buses on the uh, bikes on the bus to Lake Sonoma. Just as a reminder for folks um, not familiar with the Ironman events uh, or a two transition Ironman event, you guys check in your bikes on Friday. So. Everybody's going to check in their bikes, their bike gear bag, their run gear bag on Friday. So you'll drop your run gear bag off at T2, uh, downtown Santa Rosa on Friday. And then you'll bring your bike and your bike gear bag out to Transition 1 on Friday. So all you'll have with you on um, race morning, you'll drop off your special needs bags um, in downtown Santa Rosa. Um, and then uh, you'll get on the bus. So all you'll have is kind of a morning clothes, your, whatever your morning clothes are, your morning clothes bag, maybe your, your wetsuit, um, and any nutrition you might want to put on your bike that you didn't want to leave overnight um, uh, at, the, at, the, at, the T, at T1. So yeah, no, bus, no bikes on the bus, but that's because you're dropping them off the day before. Um, just seeing if we have any other questions coming in. Um, uh, it, um, you know, there's been some questions about the, the venue, uh, Lake Sonoma, whether or not, uh, you know, parking, I think I've tried to touch on that. Um, there's some questions about camping. I know that there's was a long tradition for folks of, of kind of camping around um, the previous venue. Um, and I did speak to an athlete uh, last week that was um, what was going to be taking advantage of uh, kind of sleeping on a boat, um, you know, boat camping. Um, but you just need to check. I don't. I, th I believe there are some additional campsites around the Lake Sonoma venue. Um, obviously, you'd want to check the Lake Sonoma uh, website uh, for that uh, what, on, as to whether or not you can camp. Obviously, we wouldn't be allowing any RV camping um, or uh, tent camping um, around transition um, and you're going to want to follow all the rules of the the venue with regards to uh, camping but um, you know we are providing a great list if you go to the Ironman Santa Rosa webpage um, there is uh, an accommodations tab and you can take a look at that accommodations tab and we I think there's actually a link um, or a document that we can provide you guys um, that shows you the distances of each hotel to um, the T2, the finish venue, and then the distance to T1. So um, so check check out the Ironman uh, Santa Rosa webpage and uh, that accommodations tab to help give you a sense of kind of um, kind of where to stay. Um, so we've got a couple people asking about um, the, the two-loop course um, and whether it's going to be crowded um, on a multi-loop course. And um, here's what I wanted to, what I'll share. It's a good question um, about kind of, you know, what are multi-loop courses like um, if you've never done a multi-loop course. Um, what we found for the first time this year in Arizona, that's a three-loop course. So you're right away. It's, you know, it's, um, 18 miles out and then you're and then you're coming back and it's a 36 mile loop and you're doing that three times 
what we found for the first time this year is we did the rolling start for the first the second time um, in Arizona, but we really um, tried to constrain the speed in which athletes entered the water. And what that did was really help the spacing on a three loop course. So as com in comparison um, for this event, um, and you know what we the feedback we got um, with the Arizona course this year was that the, the spacing was much better, the impact. Um, and the congestion was much better um, across the board. In fact, the Ironman um, world record was set there by Lionel Sanders, and he made a point of saying of all the years he'd done Arizona, it was by far the least congested he had experienced. So with that as a context, as a three-loop course, the Ironman Santa Rosa course with the two laps at the latter end, you're going to be doing the first 60-plus miles in a point to point. So that's gonna give folks an opportunity to stretch out um, and, 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 um, and disperse across, um, across those first 60 miles. And then you're gonna have those two loops. Um, and so I think what we're gonna find is that the spacing as you are on that for those first two loops is gonna be much, um, is not gonna be a big deal. And, uh, and as a point of fact, um, many of the roads on the looped portion of the course are closed to vehicles traffic. So it's not going to be like you're going to be on a looped portion of the course and you're going to have um, significant, you know, traffic concerns to deal with. There's, um, you know, of the 20 plus miles, um, well over half, if not three quarters of it, um, is uh, fairly closed or closed entirely. So... Um, that's hopefully answers kind of the congestion question on, um, uh, on kind of the looped portion. Good question though. That was from Chrissy Lim. Um, let's see, uh, what other questions we have. Sorry, just kind of trying to glance. Um, uh, we had a question the, the shuttles will obviously be available both for the 70.3 and the full, so we'll be doing the shuttling system for both of those venue event, events um, to answer that question. Um, there's just, you know, again, you know, some folks are, are, are chiming in, maybe picked up the Facebook Live event late, you know, asking, you know, how we chose this venue. And what I tried to do earlier in the Facebook Live event was just touch on um, some of the many aspects of, uh, that, that we have to balance when picking a venue. So if you, if you missed that portion of the Facebook Live, I, I don't wanna necessarily repeat myself too much, but um, take a look at the first half of the Facebook Live event and hopefully I've kind of gone through some of the, the aspects of the details um, that we kind of try and address um, when coming up with the course. Um, so we, um, you know, another question um, about, you know, the traffic control and the major intersections. Um, so last year we had, you know, California Highway Patrol, um, as well as local police um, and sheriffs um, from the jurisdictions helping manage traffic control. And again, what we're going to be doing is, is trying to balance maintaining access for the motoring public and the general public to the course, but also trying to find ways uh, to the greatest extent possible to close significant portions of the bike course. So where we're going to be closing the bike course, obviously there'll be a, a highway patrol um, or police officer there um, stopping and redirecting traffic and the athletes will be um, able to proceed unimpacted. Um, and then at major crossings, again, there'll be highway patrol or police stopping vehicle traffic and, and, and making, and making sure the athletes can cross safely, um, without having to stop. Uh, what we do to try and mitigate kind of the general public impacts is we have those pre-event notification signs out. We'll have message boards that kind of flash different signs, uh, and messages telling people to use alternate routes. And then we also send out mailers to folks along the course um, and we'll be doing press releases and radio spots and, and different tools to try and get as much information out there to the general public, to those spectators uh, and to everybody so that hopefully um, traffic impacts are minimized. The race experience for the athlete um, is optimized in terms of safety and um, 
speed and, and minimizing uh, interactions with vehicles. Um, so that's uh, kind of trying to touch on some of the uh, traffic control aspects. Um, we, you know, a couple of folks are asking, maybe f familiar with the Sonoma and, and Santa Rosa area, the Courthouse Square. Um, it's a great new um, city park court courtyard um, uh, space that's being developed. It's still under construction, but um, we are confident, uh, the city is confident that uh, it's going to be done well before um, the 70.3 event in May. Um, Rob Parsons is asking, again, is it a rolling start or a mass start for the Ironman event? Um, it is going to be a rolling start. Um, we find that that's a much safer start for athletes as well as um, it spreads athletes out as they get on the bike. So I know there's some purists out there who love the mass start feel and that kind of washing machine kick your get get kicked in the head experience. But for most athletes out there, um, getting a ruptured eardrum or a concussion while swimming is not your first choice. So what we found is with that rolling start, it's a much safer experience for swimmers. They get to self seed based on their on their speed. Um, as well as provides a much safer experience for the start of the bike. So I've done both. Uh, and as a, as a swimmer, um, that usually goes, um, you know, sub one hour. Um, I find it, it's a great opportunity. Um, and, uh, and I've talked to many athletes that, you know, are in that 120 to 140 range and, and they have a much better experience as well. Um, let's see. Uh, we've, just checking some other questions. Um, but, um, I think, you know, for the most part, um, I tried to answer most of the questions again, if you've come in late, I tried to answer, you know, or try to explain a little bit behind the venue, uh, and the Ironman course and the roads that we use. Um, so hopefully that helps feel free to use the Facebook page, um, to message me if you have any other questions and I'll do my best, um, in a timely manner to answer those. And then just to give you another reminder and heads up, um, I'm going to be trying to do a lot more of these Facebook live events, uh, answering various questions as well as just touching on each of the different venues, um, and details about racing, um, the Ironman Santa Rosa event about racing and Ironman in general, what to expect race day, um, you know, going over the, the, um, the run course in detail. Um, just trying to give you guys an opportunity to um, get a little bit more information, um, maybe ask a few questions, try and answer some of, the, some of your questions, but try and give you a context for the new event, um, why we did things, if that's pertinent, but also just kind of what to expect um, with the new Ironman Santa Rosa event. So with that, um, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Feel free to... Um, uh, share this with friends. Um, hopefully it's been helpful. Um, certainly that's my, been my intention and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope your training continues to go well and you don't catch this cold that, uh, that I have. All right, take care and we'll talk again soon.